Now, first things first, I am not recommending that you ignore the warnings and the labels and the cautions and the instructions on all of the manufacturers that put those on these fuel canisters. I'm just here to show you <laughs> how I do. <laughs> If you're anything like me, you've spent a ton of money getting your backpacking kit dialed in, and you don't want to spend any more money than you need to on getting out into the backcountry now that you have your kit. So one of the things that I do to save a little bit of money, not a lot, but a little bit, is I have started refilling these small isobutane canisters with fuel from these larger butane canisters. So this canister here is a 100 gram canister from Jetboil and it goes for about $6.50 Canadian. Uh, this one here is a 450 gram canister and it goes for about $11 Canadian, which is crazy because if I took the amount of fuel that's in here and I bought it in these size cans, it would cost me like 30 bucks. So what I've done is instead I've picked up for $20 on Amazon one of these Camping Moon Flip Fuel things, a multi-adapter from Camping Moon. And what this does is it allows me to transfer fuel from this larger one into this smaller one. But before you do, there's a few things you have to know. And one of them is the weight of this container, empty and full. So I've found a website that I think is pretty accurate and I'll link it down in the description and it gives you the empty weight and the full weight of each size of canister by two or three of the main brands. That way you don't have to do the math and you don't have to figure it out. And conceptually what we're going to do is we're going to take that full weight of a canister and we're going to use that as our limit. So I'm going to fill this smaller canister with the fuel from this larger canister until it weighs what a full canister weighs when I buy it off the shelf. And in order to accomplish that, I need to remove the pressure out of the smaller canister that I want to fill. And I need to leave the pressure in this canister, which is accomplished very simply by throwing this smaller canister in the freezer. What that will do is it will liquefy the isobutane inside it, removing the gas pressure that's in the container. That way, when I flip this pressurized container over on top of it, the fuel that's in here pushes into the canister below it because the canister below it doesn't have any pressure. It's actually the same reason that these don't work great in the winter when you're camping because they don't have enough pressure to push into the canister stove. So let's do that. Throw this in the freezer, wait 10 minutes, and then we'll come back. All right, so First things first, what I'm gonna do now that this is cold, is I'm gonna take this little device and I'm gonna point it, I'm gonna orient it so that the point that is going down is the point that is filling into something. So all I'm gonna to do to do that is I'm gonna make sure it's closed so that I don't uh, just let all the fuel out if there's any in here. Then I'm gonna screw this on just like you would a uh, canister stove. That way the canister that's receiving is going to have the arrow pointing down. I'm then going to take the larger canister that I'm using to fill it with and I'm going to screw that on the top and pretty quickly because I don't want to waste fuel I would suggest doing it outside but it's cold out here and I don't want to at which point all I'm going to do is I'm going to open the canister valve and you'll hear the fuel transferring from one canister to the other canister. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it is. Now I weighed this beforehand and the canister at the bottom only weighs 100 grams and I know that full, it weighs 200 grams. So I need to transfer 100 grams of fuel from one to the next. So I'm gonna close it now and I didn't leave it in for the full 10 minutes so it's not fully depressurized, but at that point, I can take this canister off and then I'm going to reweigh it. One hundred and twenty four grams. I have transferred twenty four grams of fuel into that canister. Now, since I didn't leave it in the freezer for long enough, 
I gotta go put it back so that I can fill it the rest of the way because I've just put pressure into this. And if the pressure is even in both of these, no fuel is gonna move from one to the other. So back in the freezer it goes. All right, it's cold again, let's do it again. Oh, see I let some fuel out that time. All right, let's let some more fuel into this puppy. Can hear that transfer. Can you give it a little more time? I didn't put it in for another 10 minutes again. I'm hoping you'll hear when the pressure balances out. You'll hear it stop to make a transfer. Or stop, you'll hear it stop making the transfer. Like now it's stopped. So it's, it's as pressurized in both containers. So I'm gonna close this back up. And then I'm gonna open this back, take this back off, and I'm gonna weigh it again and see where we're at. I am now at 151 grams of fuel. So I would just continue this process until this canister is at 200 grams because that's what the weight of this canister is full. And realistically, I would never go over that because this canister is designed to hold a certain amount of fuel at a certain level of pressure. So once this warms back up, I don't want it to exceed the amount of pressure that this can is designed for. So I would fill this up to its full weight of 200 grams. Uh, and that way I would be holding 100 grams of fuel and 100 grams of canister. And then I never have to buy this small size one again until it starts to get damaged and need to be replaced. At which point, uh, I should probably buy a new canister anyways. And it'll save me time and money I don't have to go to the store to buy six of these. Uh, I can just keep filling it up from this and enjoy backpacking for less money than it would have cost me had I not known this trick or not bought this handy little device. If you are in a situation where you have overfilled your canister and it is containing more fuel than it is intended to contain, uh, I would suggest venting some of that off. Step outside and you can use this device right here. You don't have to go get a stove or anything like that. The button on the side here is actually a vent. You can see it's labeled there. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but that way you just leave this screwed on top. You push that button and it will let fuel come out. And you can weigh it again and make sure that you're not over pressurizing your fuel. Now, one less excuse not to go backpacking.